Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. The Google Code Jam Round 1A has just concluded a couple of hours ago. In this video, we'll be covering the third problem, which is the hardest problem from the round. So let us do a quick recap of the problem. Basically, you are given a sequence of E exercises that uses W different types of weights. Uh, so for illustration here, we have four types of weights, which are A, B, C, and D. Uh, each exercise requires a certain number of each type of weights. So, for example, the first exercise here requires three of type A and one of type B, whereas the second exercise requires two of type A, two of type C, and two of type D. And the thing is, we don't need to uh, stack the weights in any particular order. As long as the stack has the correct number of each type of weights, uh, we can do the exercise. And so in moving from one uh, exercise to the next, you will need to adjust the stack so that we get the correct number of weights. And an operation is defined as taking off a weight, and an operation is also defined as putting on a certain weight. And obviously, we want to arrange our stacks in a clever way so that we don't have to take off too many weights and put on too many weights. So for example, over here, we have very cleverly put two copies of A at the bottom. So when moving from the left to the right exercise, we only need to take out the top two weights and put on the other four weights and be able to commence of, on our uh, second exercise. So the whole point is uh, when we are given an empty stack and needing to end an empty stack and a whole bunch of the exercise requirements, what is the minimum number of operations needed so that we can go through the entire exercise? Uh, exercise routine. Okay, so this is actually a very tricky problem and the solution is not easy to understand. So I hope I'll be able to explain it as clearly as possible. Now firstly, uh, I will be illustrating uh, using this pictorial illustration to represent uh, a sequence of operations to go through exercises from the ELF exercise to the ARF exercise. So basically, we have a stack here, and then to move from one stack to the next, we will need to take off some weights which are the downward arrow, and then we need to put on the uh, other weights which is the upward arrow. So this is just a pictorial uh, representation. We put down, uh, take out weight, put on weight, take out weight, put on weight, and so on until the RF exercise. Now, let's say you are given the sequence from the ELF exercise to R exercise, and in your head, there will be a certain uh, optimal way of loading and unloading weights, starting from the empty stack, uh, going through this L to R exercise, and then ending at the empty stack. Now, let us define C as the set of weights that never left the stack during uh, one such optimal way. Now, in this diagram illustration, for example, C would be the bottom three weights here, uh, because, I mean, for example, the yellow weight, although it stayed on for a while, eventually at this point it left. So, really only the bottom three weights never left the stack at all times. Uh, there's actually a concrete way to describe C. Uh, firstly, we see that C is used in all the exercises, so C must belong to the intersection of all the exercise requirements. But also conversely, if there's a common intersection between all the exercise requirements, it makes sense in the optimal set to put these common uh, requirements at the bottom of the stack and never touch it so that we don't have to waste operations uh, adding and removing the stacks, uh, adding and removing the weights. So actually C is given by the intersection of all the exercise requirements from L to R. Now, the next part is actually the tricky part. It's about finding the right uh, DP value to define so that we can solve this problem in an efficient way. And it turns out that the right DP value to define is not the value given in the required by the question, but rather is the optimal number of operations, not optimal number of ways, sorry, optimal number of operations, where we start from C, go through the exercises, and end at C. So the difference is we are, uh, the DP is defined relative to starting at C and ending at C. Okay, so that's why there's uh, now these two blue arrows added here, and the DP value is the sum of all the blue arrows. And the reason why we define the DP this way is there seems to be a natural way to uh, cut this problem into two sub-problems. And why do I say so? Think about uh, the set C. If it's the stack of weights that never left uh, the, the, the rack, right? Then at some point in the exercise, we must actually touch the line uh, C before uh, continuing on. And 
The reason is because if the arrows uh, always stay strictly above C, right? Then actually the the C will have been the higher line where that that the arrows uh yeah, C will have been the higher line if the arrows never actually go down all the way to this uh this uh lower line here. So the fact that this is the line where the uh maximum like weights that never left the stack, right? It must be that, that at some point uh from strictly between L to R, uh there's a arrow that touches the line. And this gives a natural point to cut the problem. Uh let's say we know that this point happens between exercises x and x plus 1. Of course, we don't know what x is, but uh, for the purpose of argument, let's call this this point x. Then we seem to have uh, naturally cut the problem into two, where we have from c to c here, and then from c to c here again, uh, and then we could recursively try and solve the dp. So you might think that, well, the dp of l to r is the sum of dp uh, L to X and the sum of DP X plus 1 to R. Well, that is almost correct because uh, it is not, not completely correct because we need to remember that the DP is defined relative to C, right? And then when we look at the subproblem L to X, there is a new value of C. The, the new C is the C from L to X, which could be strictly higher than the C from L to R. So in this case, for example, the C from L to X actually includes the yellow block. So this seems to be a problem, but it's actually no biggie because basically we can just artificially account for what is the gap. So DP from L to X, right, starts from this higher C. It goes through everything in between and ends up at this higher C. But all we need to do is just add on the differences in the two Cs uh, twice for the front and the end. So that's why the formula for the dp is indeed the dp from L to x and the dp from x plus 1 to r, but you add on this uh, part here and this part here. And similarly for the right half, you add on this part here and this part here. So that's why we have these adjustments that needs to be made here. So we actually have all the pieces needed to solve this problem. Uh, writing down this recursion is actually the hardest part. Uh, but then you might ask, actually, we don't know x, right? Um, we assume that x is the point where the, uh, we can split the problem, but what is x? Then this is where we realize that we actually don't need to know x. Because if we had chosen a suboptimal value of x, then we will have very foolishly uh, required ourselves to go all the way down to the line uh, after x and start all the way at the line. Uh, before x plus 1, when in reality the optimal answer does not require that. For example, th in this case, it can stop higher. So if we choose a bad value of x, actually all we will get using that same formula is a larger value. So this means we can actually just plong in the formula, but we range over all values of x and take the minimum one. The correct value of x will produce the minimum value we need. So here's all the ingredients, how, how they should be arranged to solve this problem. So first we complete the table of all the common requirements, which is the C, uh, as follows. So basically you start with stack one, then you can just uh, intersect with stack two to get this, then you intersect with stack three again to get this and so on, until you finish everything. Then now we start afresh with only stack two, intersect with stack 3 to get this, intersect with stack 4 to get the next one, and so on. So we have E square, uh, we compute all the E square values here, and each computation step involves one intersection of an array of length W, that's why it's O of E square W time. Okay, now we have all the C's set aside, now we do the DP part. For the DP, the base case is uh, DP of II equals 0. So obviously when you have one exercise, one exercise, right, remember, that dp is defined relative to the common requirements. So when there's one exercise, the common requirement is actually the requirement of the exercise. So we already start with the right uh, weights. Therefore, we don't need to do anything, do the exercise. Then we don't have to do anything to end off at c again. So that's why it is zero. So once we know the dp for sequences of length uh, up to k, then we can basically compute dp for sequences of length k plus 1 by using the recursion formula. Because when we 
put a value of x to break it up into two strictly smaller subproblems, we do know the answer for strictly smaller subproblems. So we just uh, do this in increasing uh, length of sequences. Uh, there's, this will take O of E cube time because the minimum part uh, ranges over E values of x and then there's E square subproblems. And then lastly, the answer is just the dp from all the way 0 to the last exercise. But we need to make an adjustment because again, the dp is relative to uh, the common requirement. So we need to start actually uh, move from the empty stack to the common requirement and then at the end, take off the common requirement to produce the empty stack again. So this is actually the final answer. So what do you think of this problem? I hope I've managed to explain as clearly as possible. If not, feel free to uh, review the video again. So do you manage to qualify for round two? If not, don't worry, there's still round 1B and 1C. So stay tuned and see you soon.